Spending money is the easiest thing in the world. It's so easy that we can even save our credit cards on apps like Uber, Target, and Apple Pay. My name is Darius. And Amazon. I'm Carmen. <laughs> and by the end of this video, we are going to teach you how you can actually make a shift in how you're spending to spend responsibly and keep more of your hard earned money. Right. Because here's the thing. In 2023, we spent or consumed over $19 trillion dollars. That's us. Not we, all of y'all, all of us. All of us, all of us. <laughs> <laughs> we spent $19 trillion and that's up 6% from the previous year. And this is taking in consideration high interest rates and inflation. And we still found a way to spend more money. Mm -hmm. Now, here's why we need to stop spending money now is first reason being is we don't feel it. That's yeah. how we're able to spend more money is because of these apps and things that we have at our fingertips. It's not just the fact that we have to go in our wallet and grab our credit card. We don't even have to go in our pockets now. We don't even have to leave our house now. We can do it from our cell phone on Amazon and just have all this frictionless spending where it doesn't even work its way to our brain as to a, a pain <laughs> point of. Um, do I even have the money? <laughs> yeah, do I even have the money? Mm -hmm. it, it's just I want it, I buy it, and we'll figure out the rest later. Mm -hmm. And that is a problem when it comes to our finances, which is how we got to the point to where we are right now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So what Darius shared in this like whole half of this video, we're only going to be talking about the problem. And like we said, by the end of this video, you're going to start learning the solution. So the point number two of the problem is all about the fact that we have so many accounts, mm -hmm. right? We have so many subscriptions. Everything is everywhere and we don't necessarily have a place to track everything under one household. Meaning, I mean, of course you have like your bank account, right? But the idea is if I have Netflix and Amazon subscriptions and every other subscription on earth, like where do you go to like track all of the subscriptions and actually how much that you're spending and what you're actually using and not using and how they're just going to upcharge you because Netflix just hit me with, hey, we're charging you more, yeah. right? And they charge us more, right? So again, frictionless and also uh, it's subconscious spending because a lot of these <laughs> subscriptions just happen and we're not even aware of it right we have no idea the fact that every single month or even when the money comes out we just get like an email if, if we even check our emails when netflix come out or when disney come out or when we do uber eats and the money just comes out of our account do we even know which card is coming from when we are on amazon that's another account that we have do we even know which card we're using especially if you have multiple cards on file mm -hmm. like these things are happening without us mm -hmm. like they don't even need us we just need to be a warm body and we need to just make sure that our, we have credit on on hand warm so body that, with 16 digits available and an expiration date in a cv ex exactly <laughs> exactly and this is another reason why we just need to stop spending and take a break and just see exactly where are we right now because the the it's a death by a thousand cuts Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because it's these little things, $17 for Netflix and a $5, or no, Uber isn't like $5, mm -hmm. uh, $60 Uber someplace when you go on vacation. Mm -hmm. Like it's these little things that add up over time. Our Starbucks uh, app that we use, mm -hmm. these things add up over time to be something very significant. And it's so significant until we've increased the amount of money that we spent collectively in the face of high inflation and high interest debt. Mm -hmm. One example that I could actually share with you that I thought about the other day as I was literally laying in bed making a purchase, um, I bought groceries. Right. So the convenience of having groceries and I took the time to like review all of the little sub charges and the delivery charges. And I just needed like a handful of things. And the delivery charge was like ten dollars. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can literally drive. <laughs> four miles up the street and go get it myself and not spend this $10 or I can spend this $10. And, and I spend it every time because for me, the value of is me not having to go to the grocery store and having someone deliver. And I just, it just made me realize like how many times did I do this last month? How many times did I do that the month before? And just that little delivery surcharge adds up, right? And in, in addition to like the upsell of having your groceries delivered. So the, thinking about those things, like that's one little shift that I made that now is costing more money. Absolutely. Right? When you think Absolutely. about it. And and this kind of also segues into point number three, where with everything that we shared about is, right, we're now at this point, we're just spending more than we earn because of the frictionless spending and because of the fact that we aren't just keeping track of everything that we're spending, that allows us to just get off track and get off the rails, which is why we wanted to talk about the problem. Now let's talk about the... Well, so even, even before we talk about that, like this is happening to the point where it's so easy to we feel like we have to do it. 
we, we keep feel it like going. we have to keep it going mm-hmm. because it's become uh, a, a part of our lives. It's, it's be, become a part of the convenience. Um, I know Nelson Nash in the Becoming Your Own Banker book talks about um, uh, a luxury once experience becomes a necessity. Mm-hmm. This is a prime example of that. Grocery delivery. <laughs> grocery delivery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After the experience we had in 2020 where we didn't we couldn't leave the house. Now we it's so convenient to where we don't have to leave the house where we can order everything and it just show up on our step. Mm-hmm. It can even for a fee. It can even show up. We can order something and show up that exact same day from from Amazon. Mm-hmm. Now, that is an amazing perk. It's an amazing company, but it's an expense that we are we've gotten used to a way of spending that we've gotten used to that isn't serving us for the long the long haul. Because mm-hmm. once upon a time, we had to reach in our pocket and we had to count our money out. Mm-hmm. That took time. In that time that we're spending this, taking this money out of our pocket, we're experiencing pain mm-hmm. um, of we had to work hard for this money. Now we're giving it to somebody else. Mm-hmm. The second thing is the credit card. Mm-hmm. We still had to reach in our pocket and spend time to give them that that credit card. Mm-hmm. Now we can spend money and make a decision in a few seconds where it took us some time to to come to that conclusion that we actually wanted to spend money Mm -hmm. now let's get to the solution shall we we've hit the pain points enough the solution (laughs) is recognizing when you are out of control and what darius and i did like you all know we've been in debt for over 120k and just credit cards and so we recognized that we were way out of control and we needed to be able to have some sort of financial tool that could keep us in check and that would only allow us to borrow the amount of money that is actually affordable and necessary and what not to pay back. So what I mean by this is once Darius and I really truly understood our spending and was able to keep the rails on from uh, us just budgeting, us learning more about financial literacy, us understanding how income and expenses work and not overspending, we then recognized that we were spending a ton of money on consumables and we weren't spending any money on legacy planning. Right. And uh, we didn't even have uh, an, an, an enough life insurance in this case to cover our income should one of us pass away. Once we recognized that, we were like, wow, if one of us passed away, we, we wouldn't be able to keep the house that we have. We wouldn't be able to keep both cars. We would, there was like this laundry list of what we wouldn't be able to keep. And we recognized that the other person was going to be strapped financially. So when this woke us up, we said, we got to stop consuming. We have to stop doing this uh, frictionless spending. Or if we do it, we're conscious of what's happening, right? Shifting from a subconscious spending habit to now a conscious habit. Now, what we do with this instance is when Darius and I recognize the ability for us to better plan and manage our finances. We knew that life insurance was going to be a pivotal tool that we needed to cover our income, like we said, and to provide cash that is liquid and available to us to borrow from the life insurance company when we need responsible financing. Right. And and to be completely honest with you, we didn't know this until we actually did it. We didn't know this would be an opportunity with us until we had our backs to the wall and we had no other option. And coming out of that situation that we were, were in being over $120,000 in credit card debt, we had to do something. We, we became aware and awake to what we had to do. And we were just fortunate enough to leverage our life insurance policy and it work out for us. And we want to share with you the exact same thing because we we know what you experience when you spend, 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 and you look up and you have debt that you can't afford. Mm-hmm. We know what that's like. And it doesn't have to be like that. You can you can take the information from this video and you can start applying it on your own scale. Mm-hmm. You don't don't wait until you're a hundred thousand dollars in debt to decide to do something about it like we did. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Because what um, we have done before, and we've shared this on the YouTube channel, is that we literally took one policy, one premium of $10,000, and we used that to completely wipe out $120,000 of credit card debt. But what came from that is the conscious effort, like I keep saying, building positive financial habits so that we actually understood the money that was needing to be spent and the money that we could actually keep for ourselves mm-hmm. in, in building forms of uh, or systems like paying ourselves first and understanding the value of life insurance and recognizing how invaluable uh, subconscious spending uh, was to our to our detriment. Right. And those three things that we share with you um, about 
how the frictionless spending and um, not being able to track all your accounts and spending more than you earn. Those are the plans that these companies have in place for us. And in the absence of our own plan, somebody else created a plan for us. And what we want you to get from this video is to have your own plan, regardless if you decide to go the route that we did and use life insurance to take over your expenses, your, your debts, make sure you have a plan in place that you follow instead of using somebody else's mm -hmm. because by using somebody else's plan you're always you're it's always going to be more beneficial for them than it will be for you absolutely now if you want to understand how you can also use whole life insurance policies for other responsible spending opportunities then definitely check out our next video remember to own your own lifestyle or someone else will